Welcome to Tamarindo, Costa Rica. We're here for two weeks to take in all Tamarindo has to offer. Oh, and work. Join us and our two friends, Katie and Emily, as we work remotely from paradise. It's just about time to start our work day in earnest, but before we sit down and fully dive into work, we like to go for a little bit of a walk because we spend a lot of time working while we're here. That's the nature of a remote work trip. And we wanna take the opportunities that we have to get out and enjoy this beautiful weather because soon we'll be back in Canada where it's cold. Check out these turkeys. Good morning, neighbor. I honestly feel so lucky to be able to work remotely. It is so cool to be able to work from anywhere. And here in Tamarindo, Costa Rica is absolute paradise. It's just so beautiful. Like I love that this is our morning walk right now. Beautiful blue skies, the palm trees, the waves look incredible and the mountains in the distance. Like it's just so beautiful. And obviously this is incredible, but at the same time, we wanted to give you a realistic portrayal of the working remotely abroad lifestyle and we do need to get some work done. So I think it's time for us to wrap up this little morning beach walk and head back to the office. Welcome to our office. Come on in. Okay, so jokes aside, this is our Airbnb here in Tamarindo. It is a condo in a small complex with a pool outside, which is lovely. And this is what it looks like. We've got a living room area. And then of course we have our main co-working space. It's actually nice because this dining room table has lots of room for four laptops and four people who are trying to be productive, even though it's really beautiful outside. <laughs> and obviously a nice kitchen for us to uh, cook in. But uh, let me show you the breakout rooms, the meeting rooms, if you will. <laughs> Do you want to see my office? Yeah. So obviously a pretty common feature of remote jobs is lots and lots of Zoom meetings. So in order to accommodate for that, we've got our co-working space out in the kitchen and we use the bedrooms for private meeting spaces. And this is what Dan's looks like. Is this as glamorous as you expected remote work to be? <laughs> Give us a little tour of your setup. Well, I have a half a suitcase for height so that the computers at the right level and I stole one of the chairs from the kitchen. Um, honestly, it's not the worst setup. It works. But I think what maybe isn't obvious when you watch vlogs of people who work remotely is about half of my day is meetings. So I spend about four hours a day sitting here in this setup. And obviously an important component of the digital nomad office is professional shirt on top, swim trunks on the bottom. <laughs> Well, I do have time outside of my meetings and I like to be either out at the co-working table or 
working from the pool. So this setup is how we really spend the majority of our days. It's definitely not all vacation and sitting at the beach. We're spending a solid eight hours a day in the Airbnb or close to the Airbnb. So we have Wi-Fi doing our jobs. However, that's what pays the bills so that when it's the weekend or an evening, we can go out and do stuff. Uh, that's how we're able to come to Costa Rica at all. So uh, it's definitely a trade-off. And you have to realize when you're watching the footage of us swimming at the ocean or zip lining through the jungle, <laughs> that that's only part of the story. But at the end of the day, even though we are spending a lot of time working, it's still very worth it because in the evenings, we get to go sit by the pool instead of trudging through the snow back in Ontario. So with that being said, I think it is time to get some work done. So I'm gonna head out to our co-working space and I think you've got some I meetings. I have a meeting so in a few minutes. Let's get to it. All right. been a relatively productive morning. I'm just exporting my YouTube video and I think it's time for lunch and hopefully this can be another opportunity for us to get outside and enjoy the sunshine. What do you think? Let's do it. It's so warm out today. I feel like this is one of probably the hotter days that we've had, isn't it? Oh, this is a gorgeous day. <laughs> so tempting to get in the pool, but I have a meeting right after this and I don't think I should be wet for my meeting. <laughs> If Emily and I spend too much time together, we just start talking in British accents. It's Van's favorite thing. <laughs> Go on. Now that we've finished our lunch break, Dan has a few more meetings. Admittedly, he always has more meetings than me, so he is back at the Airbnb in his little meeting room. And uh, Emily and I are gonna go and work at this cute local cafe that we've been going to for the past little bit. that I just love about Tamarindo where we're staying is how walkable it is and the place we're staying is like right in the action. So just on the way home from Seoul Bakery where we were just working for a little bit, there is a super cute Mexican spot called Little Lucha and they have churros there that I am jonesing for. So I'm gonna go grab some churros and bring those back to share and then get some more work in for the rest of the day. Yeah, Katie has gone to the cafe, I think, to work there with Emily. I've just finished my meeting and I don't have any other meetings for the rest of the afternoon. So I am going to take advantage of the pool. Let me show you the setup. Okay, first pro tip, you're gonna wanna find some shade. In order to see the computer screen well, it needs to be in shade. So I'm gonna put all of me in shade. Got my setup at the side of the pool. It's gonna be a good spot. 
two more tips while I'm at it. Put a towel under your computer so you don't get scratches on the bottom. And you're gonna need to be close enough to your apartment to get the Wi-Fi. Keep all that in mind. That's all there is to it. Time to get to work. I got churros. That's awesome. Let's actually open it and see. I don't know what they look like yet. That looks really good. All right, I think it's time for a quick churro break before we go back to work. So we thought we would take a quick break from our work to chat with you about some of the things about being a digital nomad that you might not have considered or that we generally think like you wouldn't know from the stuff that you see on Instagram. We're gonna eat some churros too. Are these good? Mm-hmm. They're so good. The first thing that you should know about being a digital nomad is that your work setup is not always gonna be the best. I feel like a lot of what you see on Instagram is really trendy cafes and like aesthetic places or even like sitting, you know, out on the pool deck to work. And while you do sometimes have those opportunities, for the most part, you'll probably find yourself sitting in your Airbnb bedroom with the suitcase stacked up on the bed to make a desk. Flashback to my office. <laughs> the thing is, most people who have remote jobs probably are gonna have a lot of Zoom meetings. So if that's the case for you, like it is for Dan, or in my case where my job includes a lot of like recording videos for YouTube or recording podcasts, you need to have a quiet space. You can't necessarily do that from a trendy cafe. And so even though it's not always like the prettiest or like most desirable looking, probably you'll spend most of your time in like a subpar, definitely not ergonomic, office setup. Second point, you're going to need to plan ahead. Specifically, a work trip is different than just a vacation. You'll need to be working about 40 hours a week. So that means eight hours a day, Monday to Friday, you'll be in your work setup. That leaves you with evenings and weekends to go and explore. You should also think about time zones before you go. If you're somebody with a lot of meetings especially. Here in Costa Rica, we're one hour behind. So instead of working 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you can work 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And now my job's a little bit flexible, but I mostly need to be available for those hours for meetings. In my mind, that's perfect. An hour or two behind is ideal because it gives you a little bit more time in the evenings to go out for dinner, see the sunset at the beach, that kind of thing. Either way, you're going to need to plan ahead. Make sure you're giving yourself enough days to see what you want to see in the evenings and weekends that you'll have. The last thing that's important to note is it isn't necessarily cheaper to live like this. Definitely the way that we do it, it is more expensive. I think the general perception online about digital nomads is that you go and live in these like really low cost of living countries and then you can stay there forever. But the way we are doing working remotely abroad, especially on this trip, is not something that we could sustain indefinitely. Two weeks here in Tamarindo for the two of us is costing us about $5,000 and we couldn't, you know, sustain that just indefinitely. It's something that we do kind of for a specific amount of time as something special and fun to do. And then we do go back to Canada where we we have a condo. So just keep that in mind. I think that if we did this on more of a budget and if we went to places that aren't touristy and expensive like this, we could probably do it for longer. And certainly when we live in our van, that's more affordable for us, but it's not always, you know, cheap to be a digital nomad. Okay, we're gonna finish up our churros, get a little bit more work done, and then we're headed to a very fun after work activity. And you cannot even see my hey, face, it's too we, dark. That's what we gotta do, make the most of our evenings. Obviously our evenings after the workday is prime time for us to get out there and explore whatever destination we're in. And while we're here in Tamarindo, Costa Rica, surfing seems to be one of the primary activities. And we've been watching people down at the beach and wanting to try it for ourselves, but I'm very nervous because I think it's gonna be very difficult, but I think we found some good surf instructors through Instagram and we are gonna finish up the work day, walk down to the beach to meet them. So, wish me luck. Surf's up, dude. <laughs> Hang 10. I hope we even come close to hanging 10. I think we might more so smash our noses off the edge of the surf or on the way into the water. I'm scared. <laughs>
Okay, so we just had our yeah. on-land instruction and we've practiced a few times here on the sand and I think it's time for us to go and I'm try. I'm excited. I, I really, I'm not sure I'm gonna succeed, but I'm feeling good about it. Yeah. I think it might be fun. I'm pretty nervous. I think this is gonna be hard work. Thanks for joining us on this work day in paradise. Not every day looks like this, but hopefully what you take away from this video is that we're always trying to make the most of our work days, whether we're at home or traveling. Stay tuned for next week's video where we'll show you what we get up to on our days off here in Costa Rica. You're not gonna wanna miss it. See you in the next video.